and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing two new die sets. We're introducing our watering can die set and also our lovely Lily of the Valley. So let's go ahead and check them out. First we'll take a look at the watering can die set and of course there's a watering can, a cute heart to decorate with, and a piece to layer behind the spout of the watering can. We also have a rake and a spade or shovel and some details for those and a cute little seed packet too and we're going to show you how these all layer together. So first we're going to layer this little piece behind the actual little spout of the watering can so you'll just add some adhesive to the back and then you can layer this piece behind. You can do a contrasting color or you can even just do a little bit of a lighter shade of whatever ever color you cut your watering can out of. And then this little heart you can layer onto the watering can or not, but it looks really, really cute on the watering can. Then you'll see for our gardening tools that we have these cute little handles that you can layer over top. And I really like doing the handles in different colors to match my card and you'll see how we do some purple ones later on in this video. Then for that adorable little seed packet, which might be my most favorite thing, you're just going to add some adhesive behind that little kind of rendered rectangle piece, and then you're just going to layer that over top, and it's going to look like one of those little seed packets. Now here you'll see in the watering can there is a cut line so that you can tuck things inside. So you can take all of the gardening tools and the little seed packet and you can tuck those inside for the cutest cards. You can also tuck die cut flowers inside which is really really cute and I think a little critter like a bunny peeking out of the watering can would also be absolutely adorable. Next we're going to take a look at the lovely Lily of the Valley die set and you'll see that it has these two stems that have the flowers going in different directions. It has cute little flowers and I love that the die cuts six of the flowers at once and then it has some great leaves that you can layer behind your flowering stems. To add the flowers to the stems, I just add a little drop of glue with my glue tube on each of those little circles and then you can layer your flowers right on top. And I love Lily of the Valleys because they are May's birth flower, which means they're my son's birth flowers. So these little flowers are just so special to me. They're so beautiful. They are gorgeous on cards and in vases and they're really fun for creating magical scenes, perfect for little critters or even fairies. And we're going to be showing you a bunch of ideas in this video today. And here you can see how cute they are layered together and when you add those stems behind, especially in a darker color of green, they are just gorgeous. So now we're going to take these adorable flowers and we are going to add them into the watering can that we just created. And as you can see that watering can has that little cut line at the top which is going to make it really easy to add our flowers in. So we're just going to layer a bunch of adhesive on the back of the watering can so it holds these leaves and flowers in place as we start to tuck them in. And you'll see we're going to tuck the two leaves in first and then we're going to take our lily of the valley here and tuck those in and this is just the cutest look. These are also really really cute in our new build a drink mason jar add-on as well. They're just such beautiful little flowers and I just love them in the watering can. We're going to tuck one more little leaf there in the background to kind of fill in the whole thing and you can see just how cute this is looking. Now here we're going to take the largest stitched rectangle which is five and a half by four and a quarter and we're going to cut some fruit salad paper which is this beautiful gingham and kind of this nice neutral tan or brown color. Then we're going to add some foam squares to the back of the watering can and also the lilies so that they have a nice pop on the card because this is going to be a nice clean and simple card. So we're going to layer that right onto that gorgeous gingham. And then we're going to take out the cute little tools and seed packet that are included in the watering can die. And for this little seed packet, this is a really fun place to stamp tiny greetings. And a lot of Lawn Fawn stamp sets have really cute little tiny greetings. So we're going to pick one out of the Carrot Bout You stamp set, but you could pick anything that's perfect for your card. And so we're going to stamp thanks a bunch in some noble fur ink onto this little seed packet that has been cut from some algae cardstock. Then we're going to take out this little stitched happy heart die and that heart die has these heart shaped sequins in it and I love using these. You can cut your own sequins by cutting them out of metallic cardstock and so we're just going to add a little liquid glue behind that and then layer that onto the seed packet just to give the card a little sparkle and I like that the heart goes along with the heart that we have on the watering can and I just love that that looks like a real sequin even though it was cut from metallic cardstock. 
for the sentiment, we're going to be using an oldie but a goodie. This is Wavy Sayings. It has a ton of general sentiments in it that are already in that wavy pattern. So we're going to go ahead and stamp out You're the Best in some black licorice ink. And then we're going to take a wavy banner die and just line that right up with that, hold it in place with some low-tech tape, and we'll run it through the die cut machine. And then we're going to add some foam squares to the back of this. And this is going to kind of become the ground for the watering can. So we're going to layer that right over the bottom of the gar watering can, and you'll see that it kind of almost creates a ground, but it's also this cute little wavy sentiment. Then we're gonna take all of our gardening tools and seed packet, and we're gonna layer those in the design. So I love these two kind of crossed over each other. That looks really, really cute. And we're gonna layer that behind that wavy sentiment there. And I just think that's a really adorable look. And then of course, we're gonna add our adorable little seed packet that's kind of part of the sentiment as well that says, thanks a bunch, which goes along with the bunch of flowers too. And so we're just gonna tuck that behind that wavy sentiment as well. And this is looking so super cute. And the only thing it needs now is a card base. So it's a standard size at five and a half by four and a quarter. And then we can layer the whole panel on top. And now this card is all done. It's so super cute. I love the lily of the valley tucked into the watering can. It makes the most adorable and perfect spring card that any sentiment could go on. Next, I wanted to take the Lily of the Valley and incorporate them into a cute scene. So here I am using my Meadow Backdrop die, and I've gone ahead and die cut that out of some white cardstock, and we are going to be inking this up. And right now I am recreating a card by Grace, so thank you so much, Grace. And one of the things that I love that she did was she masked off the top of this frame to keep it white while she inked all of her Meadow in green. So I'm just gonna take a post-it here that I kind of just ripped in half, and I'm just gonna go ahead and line it up with the grass and then just cover the rest of that frame there with the post-it. And that way I'll protect the post-it from any of my inking there and making sure that that frame stays white. Here I am going to be using some celery stick ink and I am just starting darker towards the top of the grass and lighter towards the bottom. I wanted to make sure that my second row of grass still popped out and still had that look of darker grass at the top and lighter towards the bottom. So I'm just taking a piece of scrap cardstock, I'm gently tucking it behind the hill, and that's going to protect the hill that's in the back from any of my inking, but I'm going to be able to give it that same look while it's darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. Now that we've done some celery stick ink, we're going to move on to clover ink. And there is something about this clover green color that is just so gorgeous. And I love that it really just brings this whole meadow to life. Then I went back to my celery stick ink and I went ahead and just blended that out. So now I'll take the clover to the top of that other meadow piece and then we'll layer again our celery stick to kind of blend it all out. And you'll see just how pretty this is looking already. The next step that we're going to do is add some texture with some splatters. So I've gone ahead and taken that clover ink and smeared it onto my work surface. I'm just going to use my little scrap piece of cardstock there to protect the top of my frame to make sure I don't get any splatters on it. I'm going to spray some water onto that ink that I smeared onto my work surface. I'm just going to blend it all together, pick it up with a small paintbrush, and then tap the paintbrush to create splatters onto the grass. And you can see that that's already giving it a really, really cool texture. Then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I wanna create some white splatters. So I'm gonna take out some Copic white, but you could use any white acrylic paint, and I'm just gonna get some on my paintbrush, and I'm gonna do some splatters once again. And there's something about the darker green splatters and then the white splatters together that I think really makes the ground just feel so special and magical. And so now you can see all of those little white splatters appearing all over our grass, and because we have our post-its and scrap paper, we're still protecting the top of the frame and keeping it white. And then now we can do our fun little reveal here while we peel away our post-its and scrap paper and you can see just how pretty this is. This was really fun to do. I just really had a big blast just kind of doing all the splatters and all the inking and it looks so beautiful. And so I'm going to set this aside to dry and start working on some more elements. And in this scene, we're going to incorporate the watering can again. So I went ahead and die cut the watering can from some dolphin cardstock, which is, I mean, excuse me, fog cardstock, which is a really, really light gray. And then I'm going to be taking out some manatee ink, and I'm going to ink on to this watering can. And it's going to give it kind of a metallic look. 
you'll see I'm bringing in a scrap piece of paper and protecting the handle of it so that I can get kind of a darker edge on the side of the watering can. And then you'll see I'm just kind of protecting different edges with my little scrap paper. Then I'll go up from the bottom of the spout of the watering can and then there towards the top again. And then I'll add a little bit of dark ink there to the outside edge of the handle. That way there's kind of differences between the handle and the edges of the watering can. And it looks really, really cool already. It really looks like metal to me and I really like how it looks on that green grass. As I laid it over the green grass, I realized there was a little area of the watering can I didn't quite get, that little upper right portion. So once again, I'm using my little scrap of paper to protect the spout of the watering can because I wanted that to be light towards the top. And then I just inked that a little bit more and then I inked the bottom of that spout there just to kind of match. And now it's looking really, really good. So I can go ahead and start to form the rest of my watering can. So I'm gonna die cut that little triangle piece that goes behind the spout. I'm just gonna die cut that out of some white cardstock and then we can layer that right behind. So we'll just add some tape runner and then just add that for some detail. And then we're also gonna be adding some white gel pen lines to kind of give this a nice three-dimensional look. And so we'll add it across the lines and across the curves of the watering can, adding little dots and white lines. And it really just looks really special when you add these to it. Next, we're gonna work on some Lily of the Valley pieces. So I've die cut this from Noble Fur and Cilantro cardstock. And then for the cute little flowers, I'm using some lavender cardstock that comes from our textured pack in the purples. And that's such a pretty color. I like doing the little flowers, not just out of white, but other colors like pink and purple too. To match our adorable watering can, I'm gonna go ahead and add some little dots and lines to the stems. And I'm adding them now before I layer the flowers on because I thought it might be easier to add these details before I added the little flowers. Since we inked our grass, I thought it might be nice to ink the leaves too. So I'm gonna take that clover ink and add it to the cilantro cardstock. The clover ink on the cilantro, I don't know, it just looks magical. So I'm gonna add it darker towards the bottom and then I just kind of let it fade out into nothing about two thirds of the way up. And what I like about this is it makes it nice and easy to ink these by starting with the color of cardstock, but it looks absolutely gorgeous, almost like I inked the whole thing. And then of course, we'll add some white gel pen lines to these pieces too, once again, so everything coordinates nicely. Now for the little flowers, instead of trying to ink them, I decided to use my markers on them instead. And what I like to do is take the color of cardstock and then just kind of compare it to my marker chart and kind of see what colors I think might look nicest. And I thought it might be cool to do some of them with a little bit more of a blue violet and some with a violet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a darker marker towards the bottom. And then a lighter marker is just gonna blend it out a little bit, but I'm just gonna leave plain cardstock at the top. And so we'll just kind of keep adding details to these flowers using both the blue violet and the violet shades and this is going to make them look really really special. Now it's time to start layering everything together. So I've gathered all the pieces that we've worked on so far and I need a sky for this card. So I'm gonna to go to the Rainbow Ever After paper and there's this really pretty pink slime paper and that's gonna be the sky for this really gorgeous scene. So we're gonna layer the pattern paper onto a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter. And then we're gonna add some foam strips and squares to the back of that meadow backdrop that we added ink to earlier to give it a nice pop and almost like a shadow box feel. Next, we'll start building our lovely Lily of the Valley flower. So we'll add liquid glue to each of the little circles at the ends of the stems, and then we can start to layer on our really pretty purple flowers. And I just think these are so gorgeous. As you layer the flowers, they really come to life. And so we're gonna do that on both of the stems. And I love that the stems go in different directions, which really help you create the scene and have some differences between these two. Now I'll add some adhesive to the back of these flower stems so that I can layer one of the leaves behind it and kind of see how it's gonna look in the background. I'm also gonna add some foam squares to the back of those flowers to give them a nice pop since we added a pop to the frame so that everything will be at the same level as the grass. The meadow backdrop has these dyes, which either can be cute shrubs in your meadow or they can work as clouds too. And in this case, we're gonna turn them into clouds. So I've gone ahead and die cut them out of some white cardstock. And I'm just gonna add adhesive behind one of them and layer them flat against the sky. So it's kind of in the background. And I want these to be behind the flowers. 
Then we can go ahead and peel up the liner paper on those little foam pieces and also add some adhesive to the bottom of the stems. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the flowers down first and then tuck the little stem in. And as you can see, I had a little helper here. This is my three and a half year old son, Miles, and he is playing around with this card. He was coming up with all these cute ideas for it. And as you can see, he even left me his cheese stick there on the side of my thing, but it's always good to have snacks while crafting. So I'm gonna layer my flowers in there and then I'm gonna tuck the stems right there into the grass. That's one thing I love about the meadow backdrop is that it has that cute little grass there. I'm just gonna use my craft pick to kind of help me tuck that inside. And I love that because it really gives it great dimension when the leaves and the stems are tucked behind all of those little grass pieces. And so now we're gonna continue on with the other side. And so I'm gonna add a cloud into the sky again. But for these lilies, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just put them with tape runner so that they are flat against the ground. So I'm gonna tuck these big leaf pieces in first behind there, which is looking so, so cute. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just take my scissors and trim off a little bit extra of the leaf there on the right, just so that they're at different heights. And I love that I'm gonna have some of my lilies popped and some in the background, cause it's gonna give the scene a ton of dimension. So we'll add our tape runner to the back of the Lily of the Valley as well and now we can tuck that in to the grass and you can just see how cute this is. I mean this whole scene is just making me smile. At this point you could add anything into this scene. You could add little mice and bunnies and cute little chicks and fun little spring images or you can layer this adorable watering can and that's what I'm going to do for this card. So I'm just going to tuck that right into the grass as well because I think that just gives it so much dimension. I just love that. It's just so gorgeous. And so so we're going to layer that guy there and then we're going to take out some more of the elements from the watering can die. So we have the cute little gardening tools and we have the seed packet and that heart. And so I get it. I've gone ahead and die cut these out of different shades of purple cardstock from that same textured pack. The heart is from ballet slippers and then the tools again we did out of that fog cardstock which is that really nice light gray. And instead of inking these since they're pretty small I just went ahead and took some warm gray markers and I just kind of added some scribbles. You can see I'm not being perfect about it. I've just got some scribbles and I'm just going to kind of blend it out and that's going to give it a really nice look. Then I can add some liquid glue to the bottom and then we're going to layer on those stems or I mean excuse me those handles and those handles there are really great because they're kind of out of a darker purple than we did the flowers or the seed packet so I like all the different shades. Then for the seed packet we can take the rounded rectangle and just layer that at the top to create that really cute seed packet look. And to give the heart a similar look to the inking that we did on the watering can, I just went in with my marker and what I did was I just took a pink marker and went around the edges and then I blended it out with my colorless blender. And then of course I'm going to take my white gel pen again and just add all of these cute little white gel pen details so that it matches the flowers that we've done and the leaves and the watering can. Um, I also think the little detail on the seed package just looks super, super cute and just kind of helps fill it in. And then we'll add some little rounded lines onto the heart. Now that we have all of our pieces here, we can start to work on what this scene is gonna look like. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take this little fork or rake here, and I'm just gonna tuck that in behind the grass, just like we did with the other pieces. Because once you layer it behind that grass, I just feel like it looks so special. And you can see I'm just using my craft pick to help me lift up the grass so that I don't bend back any of the pieces with my fingers. Then we can layer the heart onto the watering can and I think that's so cute and it kind of brings in the pink that we have in the background for the sky. And then I just started laying those other gardening tool pieces on there because I wasn't sure exactly where they should go because I wanted to add my sentiment. And so I'm doing my Henry's Build a Sentiment Spring and we're going to do Happy Mother's Day. And I'm going to be stamping this out in some fresh lavender ink to go along with this gorgeous purple theme that we have going. So I have laid all of my little words there all in a row and then I can go ahead and pick them up with my block and then I'm going to stamp that on to my white cardstock in that fresh lavender ink and then I'm going to use a sentiment banner die and I'm going to line that up so that I have the flagged end there towards the word happy and I'm actually going to cut off the flag towards the word day so you'll see how I'll do that in just a second so we can just run that through the die cut machine and then just trim off any of the excess that we have. Then we can just add some tape runner to that and then layer that in to the bottom of the card. 
then once that's layered in, I can kind of start to see how everything's going to look. And right at this moment, I really wanted there to be a critter on this Mother's Day card because I just thought that would be really cute. So I decided to go ahead and add my seed packet in with my tape runner there. And you can see it's just kind of overlapping onto the watering can and also tucking behind that sentiment banner. And I wanted to add a cute little mouse from the Veggie Happy stamp set. There's this cute little gardening mouse with this little straw hat that she's just adorable. But instead of stamping it in jet black ink like I normally do, I am stamping it in River Rock ink. And what River Rock ink is, is it is a alcohol marker and watercolor friendly ink, but it's in a gray shade instead of black. And I thought that that would look really nice. It kind of gives the characters a storybook feel. And because this is such a soft card, I thought it just gave it a really soft look. So I'm coloring her apron there in purples to match and same as the flower. And I'm going to add a little pink belt to go along with the pink sky. But I think by stamping her in the River Rock ink, it's really going to help her kind of blend into this card that is completely die cut. So I'm going to go ahead and line up the coordinating die for this sweet little mouse. And then, oh my gosh, she's just so pretty. I need to use the River Rock ink. There's also a brown crawl crunchy leaf that's the same that looks so gorgeous. And I'm going to add some tape runner to her and then tuck her behind the sentiment too. And I think there's just something so cute about this tiny little mouse in this garden with a giant watering can and giant flowers. It feels so magical, like a fairy land. It's just so pretty. I had such a blast making this card, just combining all the elements and doing the inking. It is so much fun. And next up, Shari has a gorgeous card for you. So take it away, Shari. So I've started by cutting the pieces of the Lily of the Valley. I've cut white for the petals. I've used noble fur for the stems, and then I use cilantro cardstock for the leaves. I am going to add a little bit of shading to the leaves and to the stems using some Distress Oxide inks. And I'm using the grip mat from my stamp wheel platform to hold my die cuts while I add this ink blending. I'm adding Lucky Clover Distress Oxide to all four leaves. I do only end up using three of these in my final card. And then I'm adding some Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide just to the bottom of the stems. This is very subtle and I don't even know that you see it too terribly much, but I thought I would make all those die cuts match. Now for my card, I'm using some Gummy Bears Rainbow Plaid paper. I'm cutting this with the largest of the stitch rectangles. And then I'm also using the Reverse Scallop stitched rectangle window for the inside. I've added some foam tape on all four sides of this window that I've created and I'm putting it onto a card base that is made from some tied pool card stock. So now I have this lovely rainbow plaid window to frame up my lovely lily of the valley. So I've placed my leaves and my stems about where I want them to be and I can start to glue those down. I'm using liquid glue for these pieces and they will get some dimension just by the fact that they're against the card base inside the window and then they're coming out of the window and that frame is popped up on foam. Now you will see me here in a little bit add some little tiny foam squares behind where the blooms are going to be to add some more dimension. So I've added the one on the right, now I will add the one in the center and it is going to come up outside the frame on the top. And this is where I decided that I wanted to support those blooms that were down in that window. So I have these little micro foam squares and I'm just picking them up with my tweezers and sliding them up underneath those circular parts of the die cut. And it's a lot easier to do this before I put those blooms on. Now I can add my third leaf, which is coming out of the window on the left side. And then I decided to go ahead and add the blooms on these two stems that I had already glued down. This will allow me to see kind of how much space these two flowers are going to take up. So I've just added some liquid glue to each of those little circles and then I'm just dropping my white lily blooms into place. And then of course I am going to do the same on this side. I do like to make them look like they're hanging straight down on this right side which I think isn't fun. And then the other side, this is why I kind of wanted to go ahead and glue these down. I wanted to see how crowded it was going to get 
between the two stems. It's not too bad. I only have two of those little blooms touching, but I wanted the left side to be a little thinner as far as blooms go. So I'm going to cut off a couple of the pieces on the stem to where I only have three blooms on this side. I'll also trim down the stem because it is much longer than I need it to be. And then I can add this with some liquid glue and I am actually going to go ahead and add my little foam square to this one since I know that I want to support those blooms that are inside the window. Once I have this one in place, I can add the little white blooms to this one. And then basically all those flowers are done. Now to add my sentiment, I'm using Henry's Build a Sentiment Spring to stamp out the sentiment, may all your wishes come true. I think you could use any sentiment on this card. It's nice and bright and happy and could be used for any occasion. I'm stamping this on some ballet slipper cardstock and trimming it out with a sentiment banner die. And then I will just add a line of liquid glue and line this up right along the bottom of the window. I kind of like the look of these flowers sprouting out of that sentiment at the bottom. Of course, I like some glitter on my card, so I'm adding a little bit of unicorn glitter to the tops of my white flowers which I think makes them nice and sparkly and then I'm adding a few little hearts cut from some guava card stock using the hearts from the hearts and stars skinny tag die and then here is my finished card and I think it turned out just lovely I love that rainbow plaid framing up these beautiful flowers this card is so gorgeous, Shari, and the glitter on the top of the little flowers, oh my gosh, it's so magical and beautiful. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team, and this one by Callie is so pretty. I love all the inking she did and how she layered all of those leaves behind it. This watering can card by Megan is gorgeous, and I love how she added the awesome stitch root and stitch garden veggies around it. They are a perfect match. I love how Grace created a super cute watering can scene and she layered some adorable bugs from a bug deal which are such a cute match for all of this gardening theme and then she added a give it a whirl and as you spin the give it a whirl you get this super cute surprise of these adorable flowers and the snail from Gleeful Gardens and I just love this so much. When I saw this card, I fell in love with it. I love how Tammy combined so many cute things. She used the veggie happy mice, the awesome beets from the great stitched root veggies, the watering can, and the little farm fence border, and all of them matched together so well. This card by Elena blew me away. I love the little die cut birds that she added onto the lily of the valley and that hot pink in the background is stunning. And here Elise added some flowers from the flower garden backdrop into the watering can. I think this is so cute. The lily of the valley fit perfectly in the build a drink mason jar add-on. It is the perfect vase for these gorgeous flowers. And then here is the card by Grace that inspired us to make ours today. I love how she added the adorable little butterfly to hers. And then here Melissa added the lily of the valley into the watering can and I think this is just so cute and sweet. And then I love how Audrey combined our darling daffodil with the lovely lily of the valley. They are perfect together and I can't wait to try this. Here Elise cut the little flowers out of pattern paper in the leaves too and I think this is so gorgeous. And then I love the bright colors on Letitia's card, how she layered the pink and white flowers and the way she added her sentiment. It is stunning. So we cannot wait to see your cards using the watering can and the lovely lily of the valley so make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!